uh, our great poet of joy, our great poet of delight, a poet for whom a garden is not a strange place, who actually works the soil with his hands, and I imagine would rather be in a garden right now than coming up here to read for you, uh, but you are in for a wonderful treat. Uh, please welcome Roske. Thank you for that. Um, so beautiful to be here in a garden. So I am in a garden today. Um, and you're right, I have dirt under my fingernails as we speak. I'm just gonna read a little poem for you. Um, and this feels like such a special place. This this poem actually takes place in Philadelphia. Um, but yes, yes. But I, but I passed it. It's called To the Fig Tree on Ninth and Christian. I happen to pass a fig tree on my way here somewhere on a street in the Bronx. So. This is also to that fig tree. To the fig tree on Ninth and Christian. Tumbling through the city in my mind without once looking up, the racket in the lug work, probably rehearsing some stupid thing I said or did, some crime or other. The city, they say, is a lonely place until, yes, the sound of sweeping. And a woman, yes, with a broom, beneath which you are now to the canopy of a fig its arms pulling the September sun to it. And she has a hose too, and so works hard rinsing and scrubbing the sidewalk, lest some poor sod slip on the silk of a fig and break his hip and not probably reach over to gobble up the perpetrator. The light catches the veins in her hands when I ask about the tree. They flutter in the air and she says, take as much as you can, please help me. So I load my pockets and mouth, and she points to the step ladder against the wall to mean more, but I was without a sack, so my meager plunder would have to suffice. And an old woman whom gravity was pulling into the earth loosed one from a low-slung branch, and its eye wept like hers, which she dabbed with a kerchief as she cleaved the fig with what remained of her teeth. And soon there were eight or nine people gathered beneath the tree, looking into it like a constellation, pointing, do you see it? And I am tall, and so good for these things. And a bald man even told me so when I grabbed three or four for him, reaching into the giddy throngs of yellow jackets, sugar stone, which he only pointed to smiling and rubbing his stomach. I mean, he was really rubbing his stomach. Like there was a baby in there. It was hot. His head shone while he offered recipes to the group using words which I couldn't understand. And besides, I was a little tipsy on the dance of the velvety heart rolling in my mouth pulling me down and down into the oldest countries of my body, where I ate my first fig from the hand of a man who escaped his country by swimming through the night, and maybe never said more than five words to me at once, but he gave me figs. And a man on his way to work hops twice to reach at last his fig, which he smiles at and calls baby, come here baby, he says, and blows a kiss to the tree which everyone knows cannot grow this far north, being Mediterranean and favoring the rocky sun-baked soils of Jordan and Sicily. But no one told the fig tree or the immigrants. There is a way the fig tree grows in groves. It wants, it seems, to hold us. Yes, I am anthropomorphizing, goddammit. I have twice in the last 30 seconds rubbed my sweaty forearm into someone else's sweaty shoulder, gleeful eating out of each other's hands on Christian streets in Philadelphia, a city like most which has murdered its own people. This is true. We are feeding each other from a tree at the corner of Christian and Ninth. Strangers maybe never again. Thank you. Everyone, please enjoy the wonderful food from Ghetto Gastro. Have fun. Thank you for being here. <laughs>